This video covers audio and video configuration for the Plex OpenPHT client. Before we begin, I am going to provide uh, a disclaimer and a piece of advice. The disclaimer is that this demonstration is being conducted on a client installed on a PC. The options available are somewhat different from what you will see on the embedded client, but with the exception of one that I will call out, most of the options that you don't see here are things that you shouldn't mess with anyway. Uh, which brings me to the second point. There are a lot of settings in the preferences for the system. Unless you know what you are doing, I highly recommend that you leave most of them alone. To get to preferences, we are going to navigate left from the main menu and select preferences. We're going to navigate left again and move down to change preferences for system. Moving back to the right, we are going to select audio output. Starting at the top, this is where you select the audio device that you are using for playback. If you are getting no sound, this is probably set to the wrong device. All you have to do is click on it and it will round robin through the options that are available. And again, if you get it wrong, you simply won't have audio. You'll have to come back here and try again. Set the number of channels to the number of channels that you have in your audio system. If you don't know what that means, it's probably 2.0. Uh, if you're using a television or an ordinary soundbar and you don't have a subwoofer, it is 2.0. If you are using a soundbar with a subwoofer, it is probably 2.1. And if you have a surround sound receiver, and a subwoofer, it is probably either 5.1 or 7.1. Audio offset is something that you probably don't have to worry about, uh, but if you have a gap between your video and your audio, which will usually manifest as a lip sync problem, uh, this would be how you would adjust that. Support 8-channel DTS HD audio decoding. Uh, if you do not know what this means, you probably do not want to check this. It allows you to send DTS HD uh, as PCM multi-channel output to an older receiver that does not support DTS HD master. Again, if you don't know what I just said, don't worry about it. Just leave it unchecked. Play GUI sounds. Uh, you have the option to hear audible feedback when you navigate and select things. Uh, I personally find it irritating, so I shut it off. Uh, the other options are to always play these sounds or to only play these sounds when playback is stopped. Enable pass-through is something that you will need to look at if you are using a surround receiver. Um, or a soundbar system that supports things like Dolby Digital. Uh, this means that you are going to pass through the digital audio signal as is to your device. Uh, if you're using this uh, on a client that's connected to an AV receiver, you very well may see a much longer list than the two I have here. If your receiver is newer, you can probably select all of them. And by newer, I mean less than about eight years old. Uh, again, if you discover that, oh, hey, I have no audio, this is a good place to look. Note that the pass-through output device is separately selectable. Normally speaking, you want to set this to whatever you set the one on top to with very rare exceptions. Again, if you're getting no sound, this is a great place to look. 90% of the time, no sound means that either the pass-through output device or the audio output device are set to the wrong thing. Moving back over to the menu, we're going to go down to software update. I have a brief word about that, which is 
leave the update channel alone. Uh, when it is set to stable, you will only receive um, updates that are fully in production. They are stable, they are final, they don't happen very often, but you know they work. If you use the pre-release channel, you will receive updates much more frequently, but they may be extremely flaky and cause your client to do a lot of unpleasant things. So, unless you are a massive glutton for punishment or are tinkering, leave that set to stable. I generally do leave it set to automatically check. And finally, video. Uh, advanced really means advanced video settings. Uh, moving over here, display mode is only relevant if you're running this on a PC. It lets you choose between windowed and full screen display. Resolution. By default, that is going to be 1920 by 1080, which is regular high definition. Uh, if you have a 4K display, or in my case a 2K display, you're going to want to adjust this to fit the resolution of your screen for the best picture quality. Uh, if you set it wrong, you can end up with no picture. Fortunately, it will give you a dialog box that will allow you to say, yes, I want to keep this setting, or no, I don't. If you have no picture, click no, start over. The next option I'm going to talk about is one that is not showing up here because I'm on a PC, and that is the refresh rate. By default, it is set to 60 hertz. Uh, you may have heard of 60, 120, 240 hertz displays. Um, the default setting is 60. The setting I recommend if you're using a TV that supports it, and uh, a lot of newer TVs do, is 24. Uh, 24 frames per second is the native frame rate of pretty much everything shot on film, and it will make most of your content look Better. So I recommend using 24 if your display supports it. Um, the final thing on the video calibration that we're going to talk about is video calibration. And what this really deals with is overscan. If you have an overscan problem, your image runs off the edges of the screen. Uh, this often is really obvious when you're looking at the menus that are down the edge of the screen, uh, but if it isn't really bad, you may not notice it right away. Uh, the other possible problem you have is a black border that goes all the way around the edge of your screen. In either event, you want to adjust that. You want the screen and the image to be exactly the same size. If you look up in the upper left corner of the screen, you will see an arrow. Uh, you're going to use the navigation buttons to press that arrow all the way to the top and all the way to the edge so that it is right on the last pixel of the screen, so that it is not going off the screen, but there's no black space around it. Chances are high that when you go to this screen, you may not see that arrow at all. If that's true, that means you have a lot of overscan. Just keep clicking down and to the right until the arrow shows up. Once you can see it, adjust it into the corner. When you're done, hit select. It will take you to a similar arrow in the bottom right corner of the screen. Do exactly the same thing. When you're done with that, hit select. This allows you to adjust the positioning of subtitles. Normally I leave this alone. If you like them higher up on the screen, you can adjust that here. In the case of most displays, this will not require any adjustment at all. With some projector setups, it may. Uh, this should be square. Uh, if you're going to check it, obviously use a cloth measuring tape so you don't scratch up your screen. 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, this does not need to be adjusted. So once you're done, just hit Escape. And that's it. Those are the basic settings that you need to get the best audio and video performance from your client. I hope this video was helpful.